The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. When was the last time you had really good Texas-style barbecue? Eric's Family Barbecue, the way it's supposed to taste. Always delicious, never rushed, and prepared to perfection. Eric's Family Barbecue uses only 100% fresh meat, slowly smoked over mesquite wood until it's juicy and delicious. We all know their brisket is the best, but have you tried their pulled pork, pork ribs, or rib tips? Amazing, and their sides are all house-made. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be sorry. Sorry. Go to ericsfamilybbq.com for more information. Holmberg's morning sickness. You've been deceived by an agent of Satan himself. He's evil. Sitting right here. Come on. No, no, he's not. He's not evil. He's just a bit rude. There you go. It silenced the voice right there. Thank you. <laughs> We're closing in on that Pladio too. Fall is upon us tonight. What happened? <laughs> what do you do? We were just talking about that. We're just talking uh, about it. right around the corner. Yeah, like, hey, two and a half more months of this yeah. song. Yeah, we got two more months. Yeah. Of, well, we got, yeah, till this one's over. Silence uh, the voice. Toledo says it's wearing thin on him. I'm just going to be open about it. <laughs> hey, look, it's every day for 10 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. After I a while. I love the Bear Ghost, but at the end, Bear Ghost. Yeah, we're tired of Bear Ghost. <laughs> yeah. I like all of them so far. And no, I, the end I like of it, all like, of them as well. I still well. like this one because it's quick, it's easy, it gets through. But you're saying it's got a limp biscuit. Every morning, like five Blink thirty 182, to ten. It's yeah, it's yeah, I heard the Blink One Eighty Two. Blink One Eighty Two. Start it again. It's an I, accent you don't recognize. Yeah. Goth Brooks was my favorite. Song. I liked Goth Brooks, but a lot of people got tired of that one. Hated that one. I like it, but Plato is around the corner. Maybe Silence the Voice wins again. They've been in f- twice. Times. Well, they've won it too. Right. Got a better winning percentage than those D backs do. <laughs> What's well, that hard to do? Fantastic. <laughs> well done. Somebody just emailed me and said, John, here's the thing about the mosquitoes. Typo blood is the mosquito's favorite, which I have. Oh, no. That's what I got. That's me. Oh, no. Are you a mosquito guy? I get no, attacked. No, I, God, we don't have it. many in our neighborhood as I itch something, but no. Oh, I see. Even mosquitoes avoid Toledo's neighborhood. Yep. <laughs> Too boring. It's called the dad bug in Toledo. It's never around. <laughs> uh, pregnant women are sadly a common target, it says, if they like they don't have enough to deal with. Elevated temperatures draw mosquitoes to you. Uh, if you work out a lot and you've been exercising, you'll have a little elevated temperature and mosquito. Maybe that's it because I do get eaten up usually when I come home from the tactical black thing. I'm, I get I get tortured. One and I saw the little bastard floating around like he's so fat and he's full of my blood, and I can't catch him. Like he lands on stuff and I'm like, whoosh, gotcha. I look at him like there's no blood on the wall. There's not. I'm like I look around there he is again. God dang it elusive and he seems so slow but i'm the slow one uh you are blue or dark blue or red clothing mosquitoes like you and that's mostly what i wear uh one study showed that mosquitoes may be attracted to people who uh drink beer damn it i can't win this uh, fight at all I, I have Game over i might as well just live with them so i'll keep that alive uh also yesterday was depressing i out of nowhere in the last 36 hours and I had to get a COVID test yesterday because that surgery on Friday. I was wondering. So I got to get COVID tests uh, all week, and like they're making you were me do. Wondering? Yeah, because I asked you earlier in the week because you, you're, I asked you about that when you're going to have oh, the procedure. Do you have to get one before get you go like in? Three. And you weren't sure at the time. No, at then I didn't know when. I knew yeah. I was going to, but I have to get three. Like they have to make sure you have it today. Like it's going to come back negative, and then the day before you get another one. It's ridiculous how many times they send you to the and and then I go to the they they make the appointment for you. And I go, uh, I'm ready to go. My appointment was at 4.30 yesterday. I get a text while I was sitting there with uh, Toledo and Caliendo. Text says, we're running about 70 minutes behind. Your new appointment is 5.40. I'm like, well, good thing I don't have anything to do, but all right, cool. And then I started thinking, if you ever did that to a doctor, tell you what, about an hour and 10 off. Make my new appointment an hour and 10 from now because I'm running behind. They'd be like, no, we're charging you and you're out. Oh, yeah. And then at 5.11 p.m. I get another text that says disregard the last message and come in at your regular time. I'm like, well, that was 41 minutes ago. Too late. It's <laughs> and now if I time it right, I'll get there at 530 if I leave right now and I'll be on time for the 540. And then it's and then as I get to the place, it says we're running about 19 minutes behind. Your new time is 540 again. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So I'm expecting the sea of people inside the, the place. It was me. 
they were just goofing around, some ladies on her phone with her boyfriend. I'm like, and they were fine. They were doing their jobs. I think this messaging thing just went rogue and started to goof with me. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I also have a picture that where I parked, I got out of my Jeep, I looked down, and I'll show you guys the photo. This is not good. This is never good. Uh, oh, this is me in the lobby. I draw uh, mean eyebrows on myself whenever I have to wait too long. So I just mark take a picture of myself. <laughs> Angry bird. Made it. This is never good. So here's me getting out of my Jeep, right? You see that little thing underneath yeah. my Jeep? Yeah. Uh, if you get in close, it's a pair of children's underpants. And I never uh, like to see just, just a parking lot kids' panties. Uh, and they have little, the police. They have little, uh, I don't know if those are basketballs or spaceships or what. I didn't get too close. But it was under my car. And I considered moving my car. Because I'm like, well, now I'm the guy who tried to... And then I'm like, but if I move my car, it'll look like I'm trying not to be part of the underwear. But here I am staring at and taking photos. I got three good pictures of these. If your kid is missing his underpants, here they are right here. If you're curious. If you're, and you've seen these, have you seen these pants? Does your facility cater to 80-year-olds? Oh, this is a different place. This is a this is a place okay. to get COVID tests. Okay. It's just one of those urgent care COVID tests. Places. Oh. But how does a kid's underwear just end up in a parking lot? There's two ways. He pooped him. He pooped him? Mm-hmm. Or that kid's missing and nobody knows about yeah. it. Yeah. And his pants came off like immediately. You, that's a frustrated parent. I've just toss him like, in the God parking damn it. lot. Or the kid Get just took him off, I guess. And yeah, they go through that stage every once in a while. Where they take him off? So, yeah. They're like running around nude. Really? Yeah, There's but, always one right. in the neighborhood. that ah. Your kid's naked again. <laughs> what? That's you, wasn't it? <laughs> no, I wasn't talking about you. You were the one that got Although, all the calls saying it, you weren't at home. You might have been the naked boy. Well, explain this then. How does it end up right in the middle of a parking spot? If the kid's running around naked, that means he's left the car. Whee! So the parent would have to notice. Yeah. Right, running around the lot. And, and then go get his pants. Let alone you pick it up or you think, oh, it's too dirty now, but no, you I'm still not putting pick it up. naked. Yeah. You still pick it up, unless he pooped him. If he pooped him, then right. you're an even bigger pig because he pooped him and you tossed him in the parking lot. That's my leading guess. The kids suck. Is he soiled and then they threw <laughs> yeah. him out. Oh, there's the, there's the leading guess, Brady. Kids <laughs> suck. <laughs> And uh, parents are intolerant of, like, they act like they love them and stuff, but they take their pants off and chuck them in the parking lot love for us. Love of a child, At a doctor's no. eye, Brady's love of a child can eat all sorts of D. <laughs> <laughs> it is not worth it. There's nothing, nothing, nothing a parent has ever told me outside of that farcical love of a child thing. It makes it like, God, it sounds great. You just don't understand the love. I'm like, you're right. I don't. Because I think you're making yourself love it. Everything you tell me is your life's been worse. And wait until Toledo comes in here one of these days when he's got to pay the school $300 because his kid stole a toilet and some soap because that's the big <laughs> thing now. The dastardly licks or whatever they're calling that thing now. Yeah. Devious licks. Devious, Devious licks. Yeah. licks. It's just uh, stupid. Using old-timey phrases like kids know what that is. Devious licks. Stealing out of bed. Your kid's a – he's a target. He's going to do it. I've had three talks with him already about If you it. end up on the devious page, well, because, kill you. So when Mesa High got shut down – of course, there's like a dozen kids that have videos of, yeah. of what everything's going on. So the police have it. So they had an assembly. And now the newest thing is is showing the videos of the cops coming in and taking the two kids out that, that were in trouble for that. So I showed those to Alex. I'm like, you see that yeah. devious licks thing? This is going to be you. Yeah. Don't be, don't and be that I'm, guy. I'm, look, I don't care about your kids at all. If you don't, I don't. I, I don't want leniency. Right. I, put them in jail for Make however an long it would take uh, anybody else who did it. Don't, well, you're just a child and you're like, nope. Uh, make one kid a one-year prisoner and make it a white kid. Oh, yeah. That way everybody will think, well, this is out of the ordinary. They put a white <laughs> kid in jail for a year for these devious licks and stop saying, well, they're just kids being kids. Well, we're going to put a stop to that it's because it's a YouTube challenge. You're an idiot. I understand goofing, but YouTube challenge? Mm-hmm. Your kid's a moron. Needs a year in jail. Yeah. It even hit God's school. You got one? The, uh, at the Yeah. The Gilbert, Gilbert Christian High School. Not – Kirby, because I talked to her about it. She not didn't even Kirby, know about Brady. It. We didn't even suspect not, not it. Not the middle school. <laughs> but it did because the superintendent of the schools put in a basically announcement out about this. This is happening. Yeah. Just want to let you know, please talk to your kids about this. Let right. them know that. We'll kill it. them. And then the next day. Is the Christian in at, jail? I guess at the high school, the, someone trashed one of the bathrooms. Is he gone? Is he in jail? I don't know. Vandalism? I hope so. They just disappear. The kids, yeah. they just don't They've, go to that school anymore. Yeah, they just ask the parents for a couple more bucks. That's usually a private school. That's one way of keeping. Give them me in. a few more dollars, we'll keep them in. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, yeah, the, the, that's the stuff. That but seeing panties in the parking lot at the uh, health center that I was at was like, okay, well, this is strange. Start <sighs> go in there, get my nose done. You know, 
she jabs the thing in there a couple of times. And he's still got that disgusted. Feels awful. Yeah, he's got a down. great noise for that. <laughs> it's like when my grandma used to go ish. Well, it's it's she the whole everything. it's the whole of finding the kids' drawers in the yeah. plus kids in general. <laughs> right. Know, that's, yeah. What would you rather find, a kid or a kid's underwear? <laughs> I'll take the underwear because then I don't have to worry about this kid's health. <laughs> No pressure. I just drive away from the underwear. I mean, I'm driving away from the kid, too, if nobody's looking. But That's the parking lot uh, COVID check. Yeah, maybe. You pick it up and smell. <laughs> oh, oh, I can still yeah. smell them. This kid, this kid is... Whew, this kid's in a Must basement. Must not have it. This kid's in a basement. There's no poop in here. I don't have COVID, but I know where he is, and I'm not looking for him. Uh, so, yeah, so I get the COVID test and all that. And then on my way home, I get a call from a friend who our mutual friend and now has COVID and is heading to the hospital. Uh, it's not good. Uh, and then I talked to another buddy last night who has had it for seven weeks. And he, like, it turned into nasty, bad, terrible stuff. Almost got him. And, like, he's going to the doctor now to see if it's permanent damage. Uh, it, it's seven, eight weeks. And then we get an email this morning from a guy who says, hey, these vaccine commercials that you guys run have to stop. They say it keeps you from getting you're 100% right. We listened to it again. That commercial says, yeah. hey, don't you want to get the vaccine? It'll keep you from getting and spreading COVID. Uh, and I, I have to say that the Maricopa County, you can be mad, and I know they bought time, and you're not supposed to talk about people who buy average. You're wrong. And at the end of your commercial, it says, uh, get to know the facts at Maricopa. Blah, blah. You're wrong. Your commercial's wrong. At least misleading to say it keeps you from getting it. It does not. Yeah. And that's the message where people are getting blinded by this stupid thing and it won't go away until we all know the vaccine is not a design to cure it or to keep you it's not a shield from it it keeps you from dying from it and it keeps uh, us able to catch it without you know being in peril and filling hospitals it does not stop you from getting covid one of the guy the first guy I was talking about had the shot and he's got covid again he's not he's not doing great but he's not going to die he just needs a little medical attention but he's not going to clog up a hospital bed. But that commercial is dangerous because it's going to it's going to send the people who are tribal one way into a trench going that the, the, the county is lying. It gives them all the power they need to say, oh, the government's lying to us and trying to get this shot in us. When I listen to that, too, and I'm on the other side of that topic, I believe you should get the vaccine. But I hear that commercial and I think that, that cements the point of the people that I'm trying to talk to. I've it, definitely they're seen absolutely the, uh, right. the, the fact that what I know is the – People that have gotten it and got COVID, yeah. it's been definitely less severe compared to the ones With that the I vaccine. know a couple of friends that have yeah. gotten it and they're not vaccinated. Well, that's – the guy that's really bad did not get the vaccine. Yeah, And that's what it's supposed to be preventing. It seems to be correct. It pre- well, that. look, we can st- – we, have you seen football stadiums? They're jam-packed. If this was last year pre-vaccine, this would have been a disaster. It would have spread all over the place. Yes. The hospitals would have been packed and everything else. So the vaccine does its job. Whether or not there's long-term effects, I don't know. And frankly, personally, to my ass, I don't care. Like, so long as we can eat dinners and have a nice free life, go I'll shave, a, a, I'll shave yeah. a few years off or grow an extra head of my body in 10 years. If I can go to a ball game without having to worry constantly that this is going to be the Tame end of all Paula of us. show? Huh? Go yeah, I went Tame. to the Tame Impala show, and they said masks and vaccines, and I, nobody was wearing them. I'm like, all right, I'll get in on this. This is no big deal. Yeah, I went to a full Gila River. And I want to be able to live life like that. That's me. Don't get up my ass. I'm not getting up yours. But that commercial, they're 100% right. The second that thing says, keeps you from getting or spreading COVID is incorrect. And then to have the nerve at the end say, go to our website, our county government website to say, get the facts. So somebody said, I appreciate KUPD because you guys are always telling us the truth. I'll be honest about that. I, didn't, I hadn't heard that yet. But that's, that's wildly inaccurate. So... Sorry, commercial buyers. I know the salesperson is going to get mad about that, but they need to change that. And if they're decent human beings, they won't get mad that I'm saying this because they'll say, you know what? You're... It doesn't keep you from getting it. And that's the message that we I – mean, nobody can what, – what the F happened to the ability to just spread the message to somebody and say this is how it is? And I know you may disagree or agree, but here's at least how easy it is to – ugh, it's garbage. But, yeah, my buddy who got it that was not vaccinated is, was not in good shape. I mean, something. I mean, he was physically in good shape, but he was—he's like this kicked the bejesus out of him. So it just makes me say, "Ugh, little little mistakes like that commercial are going to make people go." Well, the government lies, and I'm not going to get that shot. And the next thing you know, you're going to be in this hospital bed like my friend was, and not being able to breathe when you walk across your hallway at home. And that's one thing that's that I agree stop. about 
it did definitely make me feel a little more confident about being out. Absolutely, and it, it should because so, it's totally not going to kill you, yeah. and you can still catch it, but it's not going to get you badly. And if it yeah. does, you probably had something really bad going on anyway. I mean, it's the same thing as catching a, a cold when you've got HIV, AIDS. Like it's not the AIDS that kills you; it's your immune system shot. So there might be something else going. And on. I've in in I can almost double it down a little bit because I had it, and I feel like oh well, my body's. Yeah. And let me say and this who also. Who knows how accurate that is. Even that, if it doesn't kill you because it doesn't have a huge kill rate. It keeps the hospitals clear. That's the thing. It keeps the hospitals clear because they they just told uh, people uh, at the hospital that I, I go to, not the core, but I went to another place to get the, you know assessments of this, this, and this. And I talked to the doctor. I had to, it was medical. One medical is where I go. He said, we have to stop our cancer uh, um, appointments. We have to push those back a couple months because we got backed up. We got to give these people a break. And so now people who have cancer, like their appointment would have been September. Now it's going, we're looking more like December. And when you got cancer, that's scary as hell. My mom had cancer. It was the weirdest thing. She got cancer and they, they diagnosed her. This is a few years ago. And, uh, and she goes, oh, that's the worst news you can get. And then they're like, okay. And I think this was probably, I'll throw a month, I don't remember, like May. And they're like, so you, well, your first appointment to get this looked at is the end of August. She goes, is that, is that bad? Now that I have this, do I, I don't know that I can go through the whole summer just waiting to find out, what, yeah, to find out what's next. But they, this gigantic gap in time to get an appointment, now they're even bigger. She spent the summer at Sprouts? She was at Sprouts curing it the entire time. <laughs> right. And she probably did. Got better. But, you know, and then my friend who had a stroke, uh, he was in his 50s. He's diabetic his whole life, and he had a stroke in his 50s and had to sit in a hospital room because all the beds were full. And didn't have anybody sitting with them because they couldn't. You know, I mean, those are the reasons why this kill thing, the death thing, should never be in anybody's right. brains. Right. It keeps the hospitals clean. That's it. I get frustrated with this whole thing because we could, if we all just cooperated, even if we all cooperated to not get the shot, and we all cooperated to say, all right, let's just stay away from each other for three months, it would be over. But we can't. We don't cooperate. And then when you hear things like that, I'm all with you. I'm with you guys in the trenches that don't vaccine when. A government commercial comes up and says something that that wrong. It's just you're right. Huffman is right. Yeah. Our friend Ted is right. When you hear that, hey, the government said it keeps you from getting it. See, something's fishy about that. All I say is, don't breathe on me and keep your kids' panties off the parking lot. <laughs> oh, we just had an email. Uh, apparently, Father Dale and you share the same doctor's office. <laughs> Oh, Father Dale's. <laughs> but it's the worst because they were like decorative. Like the, if these were my decorative, well, they had little designs on them, and I don't see poop stains at all. I'm looking. I'm close up on these. Hey, you know what? We'll, I'm going to send them to Toledo, and then uh, we'll put them up on the website. If this is your kid's panties, is that legal? <laughs> Can we do that? Yeah. <laughs> Toledo. Hey, well, I didn't I'll do Toledo anything. Post what do you that mean? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. No what one's going to claim those. Why that's not? a waste of time. No, it isn't, Brady. It was like, that's my kid's panties. He crapped his pants. getting Facebook jail. Look, yeah. <laughs> we're not getting Facebook jail. Anybody know these belong to is not a bad thing to put on Facebook. <laughs> Sounds like you're trolling. Hey, look what I found. <laughs> I'm not trolling. Anybody need a pair of free panties? Check in with uh, Toledo oh, at the KUPD. I sent them to you. It's disturbing. Look, I don't want to have to live with this in my mind. Put it out there on the social media. That's what it's for. And if you're a pig parent whose kid craps his pants, that's your problem. Do not make it mine. Those might be pizzas. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. If it's pizzas or basketballs, I don't know what's on there. You guys are looking way too close. Well, we got we to. Are, We're that investigating. That band is uh, well worn. But then on that one, there's something. <laughs> See if there's a name. Right on. Well, it's an American kid. It's Tommy. fat. So the band is well worn because the kids put on too much weight. He's in the upper ninety percent tough for Maybe weight. that was it. They're too tight. Yeah, they're so iffy about <laughs> tight. posting that. A little eighty pound three year old that's running around. I'm going to send it to Dom. Make him post it. No, post it. It's fine. I'll take the heel. Uh, John says I have to post this. Is fine. Check out what John found yesterday. Uh, huzzah! Huzzah! Yeah, I don't. I don't know what goes through your mind when you're like, I'm just not going to. You crap your pants. You carry those to your next trash. You don't just throw them in a parking lot at the doctor's office. Disgusting. And the best thing about Tumbled the, out of an open bag? No. Not in the no. middle of the parking spot. I could see that over on the edge when you're trying to get into a car and something, or the kid lost his mind and tossed him out the window or something. Yeah. But you're just not paying attention. If your kid can, dro- if your kid can drop trowel and chuck him in a parking <laughs> lot and you don't notice. Before you go. Yeah, hey, I'm, you got I'm gonna, yourself a picture. I'm going to make a prediction. 
If your kid can take his panties off and throw them in a parking lot and you don't notice, we're going to see you on the news in your drive, driving or parking lot uh, driveway just going, oh, my God, I left him in the car. I forgot I had one of those. You're not paying attention to your kid at all. You're, you're naked, kid. I've never understood that. When I, in the house and stuff, it makes sense because you're not supposed to. Right. But in public, when a kid gets naked and nobody notices, he's paying attention. Isn't it adorable? No, it's not. No. It's, it's disgusting. If yeah, Grandpa did it, would it be adorable? Because they're the same mental capacity. <laughs> it's twisted. I mean, think about it. If an 80-year-old man came... I like Ray Romano's old joke when a little boy comes in the room and goes, Dad, my pee-pee's getting hard. And everybody laughs. But if Grandpa did it, you'd, you'd put him in a home. <laughs> hey, my pee-pee. He's just as surprised as the baby. <laughs> anyway, long story short, that commercial is misleading. I, you know... They should look into it. We'll have somebody check that because that's not right. If we're going to run them, make sure that at least they're factual. And second, uh, just to heed the warning of people who I know now. It was weird yesterday. Like right after I got my nasal swabs, I got calls from people. Uh, you know, this guy, he's in. And then another friend of mine who was like really just a, a healthy, smart, normal human being. He's like, I got it. I'm like, did you get the vaccine? He goes, no, I dodged. Like, And I didn't want to be the jerk that, you know – so now do you regret it? Right. It, he already got sick. I mean, the guy's gone through enough, and I don't want to throw that bomb on him. Yeah, it's all right. Well, it doesn't matter that you got it or not now. Hopefully you get better. Because that's, I already know. Like, I was at a, a get-together on a, a, a family birthday party on Saturday before the Tame Impala. And everybody was kind of like eyeballing each other. Because they knew some people stood on the left and some people stood on the yeah. right. And I, I'm not kidding. And most of the people there were over 60 because it was an over 60 person's birthday party. They cannot not talk about politics. There were like little arguments and fights and tears. And then one of them said, you know, immediately you'd see the one uh, guy come in and he's kind of the rebellious type. Have you gotten your COVID shot? Everybody. Everybody. Have you done oh, it? You're going to die. Yeah. Everybody was calling him out. I'm like, yeah. you can't even have like a, a normal functioning conversation. It's weird. So just, you know, stay in your camp, do whatever you do, but just be responsible about it. And especially if your kid's got no pants on, keep that out of my parking lot, please. You know, I talked to a, another friend yesterday who is a uh, person of color and he had a funny line. He said, I, I'm happy every time. A white girl gets abducted. I'm like, all right, what are, you, what are we talking here we about? Go. I know. I was like, all right, I'm going to hear you out here. That's a terrible start. To Good opener. To, you, you got, got my attention. Definitely <laughs> have the audience. <laughs> and he uh, he goes seriously. He said, watch the news. He said, There'll be two or three uh, black people we haven't even thought about looking for pop up on the news because people feel guilty about I've it. I've seen it already. <laughs> and sure enough, this morning, <laughs> right. national news: Arizona looking for there's this dude's been missing for a long time. His name's Daniel. Her uh, what is his name? Uh, is it Daniel Daniel Robinson and his dad is David Robinson? So I got excited. Davidson's going to. I'm like the, the admiral. The admiral, yeah. even more important. Yeah, right? more, he's like a super important. This guy's been missing. Uh, he he went missing. Uh, did they say a year ago? It said well, the, and, and they said it. The finding the remains of Gabby Petito in Wyoming reminded the public to keep 24-year-old Daniel Robinson in mind. This is exactly what we were talking about. So there'll be black people popping up that we've been looking for for years because the news feels bad about this white woman syndrome thing that has, it's clear. Let's get more out there. Yeah, he went uh, in Buckeye. He was just down in Buckeye. We haven't heard a thing about this. He's a geologist. Uh, his, his, uh, his dad's like, we got to have people doing more to try to find my son. They found his Jeep. They think it was in a posed position, crashed. He's missing. Um, and he's like, I had a, he had to have a private investigator look into it because people stopped helping him. Like, eh, we can't find him. Uh, the, he wants him to criminally investigate his son's disappearance because of finding a private investigator. The Jeep was definitely driven after uh, where it was parked. Positioned. He was, wow. He went missing in June 23rd of 2021. Haven't heard a word about it. Not a single peep. Uh, he was last seen the morning of the 23rd driving near Sun Valley Parkway and Cactus Road. I have no idea where that is. It was in a Jeep, a blue Jeep Renegade. He didn't tell anyone where he was going. There's some fishy stuff going on. Didn't tell anybody he was going anywhere. My guess is some girl ruined him, and he went on one of those weird dude drives. Had the Brian Adams playing. He probably had a little, look into my heart. I don't think that. Uh, <laughs> maybe. 
<laughs> but I'm guessing it's more like uh, maybe it was more of a. This might be time sensitive, but bitches ain't tricks and hoes. <laughs> That's what he should have been playing. Uh, but the Buckeye Police Department has worked with outside agencies 70 square miles, and they're like, I can't find them. Cadaver dogs, all that. Nah, it's over. It's crazy. They didn't even find his Jeep for three weeks. Found his Jeep on 19th. But now the news is like, we're also looking for the... They showed a Mexican girl that's been missing for two years in L.A. They showed another one that's been missing here for two years I didn't ever know about. And he said it, and I, it's hard to argue. I'm glad when a white woman gets found, because it makes it so they start looking for missing black people again for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed hysterically, but I'm like, you There's can't argue that. This. He's right. Yeah, His clothes, cell phone, wallet, and keys were found at the scene. Underwear? That's what I'm saying. Did I find some? Is he very, well, is he, is he, is he, is he approximately two feet tall? Because <laughs> I think I found his underwear. Tip, little tip. Little tip. If he's a little over 24 inches, I think I found his underwear. <laughs> And when I say that 50, about a 60 pounds? when I say that about a missing black man, when I say twenty four inches, of course I meant height. <laughs> yeah, so they think foul play is involved. But I, have you heard a word about this story at all? He's been missing since no, June. not a peep. Handsome, successful, young. Why? It makes you wonder. But he made the point. Hey, man, I'm happy when a white woman gets found. He goes, I don't like that they get abducted, but when they get found, they, the news starts getting guilty, and they start bringing up all the missing people of color. And I'm like, that's crazy talk. <laughs> sure enough, that's all I've seen. Also, there's a a Negro that's been missing for a couple of months we didn't ever tell you about. News, we don't care. It's just crazy. That's I, I had to text Brandon Lee and ask him why that is. Like, in the newsroom, when do you decide this person who's missing isn't as important? Or it isn't, I guess if it just doesn't catch on with us. And I, I'll tell you this, a missing man will never have the power of yeah. a missing woman. A Which missing man did a special on that. Yeah, almost always a missing man wants to go missing. I would say like 80% of the time a guy who wants to disappear has done something stupid or is trying to disappear. And I don't know why I, I don't assume abduction with a man because abductors don't go after dudes. That's Right. Not kidnapping. I mean, there's something terrible that went. Those reasons that you listed right there are most of the time. Yeah. That's why it's a missing. It's a murder. Yeah. And they and they did a good job getting rid of the body. But with men, there's very rarely. He's been. How many times has there been? He's been missing for days and then a guy appears. My my captors did. You know, there's been a few, but not too many. Usually it's the cartel that's stealing somebody for good reason. I'll go and say this. The cartel has good reason? Yeah. When a man goes missing. It's usually for a ransom or he deserved it. Right, Brett? Am I wrong? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the Italian, well, I ask you. Notice I'm quiet in this conversation. Yeah. Dudes just don't get snapped up off the road. No. For for reasons we can't explain. And that's just the a- random carjacking, like back in the you know, in the was it early nineties, Michael uh Jordan's father. You know, I don't know what well, happened there. Oh yeah. yeah. Nobody'll talk about yeah. that. But. Yeah. There's some gambling issues that went on with that. We just don't talk about. It was like in Goodfellas when he starts talking about, you know, everybody. He went to jail because he wanted to go to jail. Right. To get away from his wife. To get, to get out of his house. <laughs> yeah, but I just, I, you know, and I know there's circumstances that are different where somebody will go missing. And it's like some, you know, weird trafficking thing. But for the most part, a, a healthy uh, adult male is not somebody that is targeted by a guy to kidnap Unless he's got millions and millions of dollars. That story of that family, that, uh, that, uh, that guy that they thought was wealthy, and those Mexican uh, cartel guys stole him and put him in that box that was two feet by seven feet, and he lived there for 238 days. And uh, they thought he had a ton of money because it's an American. And I, I don't, he wasn't American. He was from somewhere else. But his wife was, and they had kids and a beautiful home, and yeah. they, they were falling they around. in Houston. Huh? Her, no, uh, no, they wife, were down in Mexico. I thought her wife... Family owned a news or something. I don't remember that. Yeah. I just I just know that they thought they were wealthy, and she moved down there from uh, you know, the U.S. to go be with this guy. And they were feeding him chicken heads and water. He went from like 160 pounds to when he knocked on his wife. The, they let him loose, and he found his way home. And she thought he was long gone. And he knocks on the door in the back, and she opens it up, and she's like, "There was this 80 pound figure." The guy was 85 pounds, and he had but he, and they put, shot him in the thigh. Yeah, they shot him. him. They put sandpaper in the box. That he was living in, 
that he had to stay in. They oh, played I hear this one. Tejano music the entire time, as loud as you can. Oh, play there you it. go. Oh man, look, I would give me the sandpaper over that. <laughs> I I that just that rub was... my ears on the paper. Yep. It's, yeah, I forget the name of the people, but that that one was outside of San Miguel. Yeah, it's yeah. always money. Like a guy gets kidnapped, it's always for like they call back to go. We've got your husband. What are you going to give us in return? We'll let him go, or political or something like that. With girls, it's just usually it's a boyfriend or a bad dude. And they, like they're more susceptible to just getting nabbed. Guy goes missing. I guess the news isn't as interested as like why didn't he fight back? Like we think this macho thing has to kick, and it's like well he must have done something wrong, or somebody was after him. A girl goes missing, it, it, she can just be walking down the street minding her own business and go missing. You hear that, ladies? That's horrifying. So, yeah, so the guy that's missing there that they're doing all the news stories on, it was a, on CNN last night. They started Arizona, there's a story. I'm like, wow, this is breaking across this, the nation now. That this this Because he's good looking. He's a good looking young man. And so they're like, well, this is good for TV. See if this catches on. And if it doesn't, you'll, not, you'll hear nothing about it later. But, John, even with you guys, as time goes by, coverage wanes. Oh, absolutely. But it usually is divided regularly. Usually you hear about it at least. I didn't hear about this I one at all. Not even a enough. little bit. Yeah, Dude Goes Missing is not on our radar as citizens. Anybody question his crazy woman? Well, that's what I think. I always say when a guy goes – anytime a man goes somewhere and doesn't tell anybody, he's getting away from a girl. Yeah. He's, he's, he's done with her. And the only time you ever hear about a man missing is like after he killed his family or something, like that guy in, in <laughs> right. South Scottsdale. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, still out on the run. Still missing. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's and right. the and the dude who got Petito. Yeah. Yeah. He's missing. Right. That's when men go missing, when we've done something awful mm-hmm. or we can't stand being with you and we don't want anyone to know where we are because then they can find us too. Because she's going to make calls in about three hours. He's not home. She's going to call all the friends. You're going to get contacted. He's just disappearing. No phone, no nothing. Or something terrible happened. But yeah, it's weird how. We all kind of have our – it's predisposed what we think is supposed to happen with this stuff. But, yeah. But now it's all over the place. So my uh, my friend who is not black, I will preface that. He is not a black person, but he is a person of color. Said he likes when white women go missing because it makes you look for us, us brown people. <laughs> and he's right. He's 100% correct. You know what would get me interested in this missing person, John? Money. If there's police body cam footage of his hard nipples. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's Gabby the one Petito. Thing. <laughs> uh, it got me interested in the case, too. <laughs> Megan said to me yesterday, she goes, How in the world did you notice her nipples? Every guy noticed yep. her nipples. No, they didn't. That's the first I've heard of it when you said it. And I'm like, oh, you're a woman. The guys hadn't seen the video yet. I'm like, That's it. She looks like she's 12. I'm like, We're not doing it. Look, she can be eight. John Benet was a great story because she's a beautiful young girl. Yeah. Like, pretty white girls, no matter how old they are, are the ones we make a, we fawn all over. That's what my point was. Now, she happened to be of age, not wearing a bra, and you notice that. The first thing a guy notices before the story, we don't see the headline. The headline becomes hard nipples. It could say, Jody Arias, murderer. And, oh, what did we do? God, her nipples are amazing in that picture. Like, if your nipples are hard, it, it, it completely uh, usurps the entire story. It comes about your nipples for at least a few seconds, and we're going to just see how hard her nipples were. We joke about it, and we're like, yeah, she's a horrible person. And then every that guy second. Googled those naked pictures of her, too. <laughs> of Jody right Harris. away. We all, once, yep. the, once that came out, it was like, there's a bunch of nude photos that have gone public. The, you could hear keyboard oh, yeah. <laughs> clicking and clacking all across. Well, I, don't, I know she's terrible, but let's take a look at those cans. <laughs> so the way uh, the mind of a man works. Then you decide if she did it or not. That's oh, true. She was in a bad, you <laughs> yeah. know what? Is this eh, self-defense? I mean, there were times I looked at the Jody Arias thing and said, how do you screw this up? <laughs> like she was totally like seems like she was in man all you had to do was give her extra attention every once in a while she needs affection i think is the problem and the guy was but it turned out she's absolutely a horrible human being with great cans what lesson can we learn from that go booby blind you might end up all stabbed up the boobs are the headline but pay attention to the byline she's got cans but she's crazy words to live by it's, it, those are words to live by because <laughs> crazy will eventually make the boobs a non-factor. How many times has a girl with great cans been your friend's girlfriend and you're like, dude, she is the worst human being I have ever met. And he's like, you're right. And they break up. And then like, I don't know, a year later, there she is again because he forgot. And the cans, you never forget. 
Yeah, she's back. I think things are different. I'm like it's the can- you're, you're, the cans are the same. That's the thing. She's the same. So are her cans. Yeah, I know. She looks so good. We'll go blind to a pair of great cans. We'll overlook all of it to a pair of great cans. Cans are the headline. Read the byline. Girl with great cans stabs four. What are you looking at? What's the first thing when that's the headline, Brady? Girl with amazing breasts stabs four people at mall. What pictures are you looking for? Girl. How about this? (laughs) Former nude model kills five. What's her name so I can yeah. stalk her online? We're not looking at like, I missed her. the killed five part. Right, right. Yeah, I'm looking for the five victims. <laughs> right. You're not reading the story for, oh, my God, the heart. You're looking for pictures of this girl. When, what did she look like when she was nude? I let her stab me, said every idiot reading it. Yeah, we're pretty easy to predict us, fellas. Good pair of cans. That'll change the game. John, maybe that lost dude pissed off his garbage man. <laughs> <laughs> You never know. Wow. <laughs> Whoa, Would they look for Brady? Would <laughs> Brady they? be uh, the Us? news? Would the news care? Oh, we'd look for God, It's hot. I'd wait until reasonable weather. He's got enough friends still <laughs> at the market to where they'd look I would also him. say Brady's done himself a favor over the last few years by having plenty his body can live on if he's lost in the woods. You'll make it. Yeah, that 288 days, the guy <laughs> in the... Um, Sam Miguel. You wouldn't have had to do it. You'd, you'd, have been, you'd have come out fit. A lean, mean fighting machine. <laughs> you'd be ready to come out like a Thanks, 185 and started his own YouTube channel for fitness. Here's the secret. Live in a box for nine months. Huh? Yeah. Blow it up. Box it. Occasionally uh, nibble on a chicken head. That was it. Remember the the sandpaper part of it. Oh. Found out was ended up was fingernails and dried skin on oh. the surface of the box because the other people that were in there before him. Ooh. That? I never yeah, read that. They talk, they, oh. Because it, he was also scratching down trying to feel around to get out oh. of that thing. Well, then they put that big hot light in there. With and him. his cousin with uh, some of the ransom money goes down there to make the exchange and they take him for three weeks, yeah. get the money. Well, they, they, they rallied up to get like half of it. I think they went like $8 million or something ridiculous. Yeah. And they ended up like this. They, they got the government involved and threw a couple million bucks this way. And, and not enough. And they nabbed the dude who's dropping the money. And yeah, it was like, it's a crazy story. Nobody knows about it because it was a guy in a box. If that was a girl, a pretty blonde girl, it would have been, there would have been 30 movies about it. Jesus Christ, Brady showed a trailer this morning. They're making a movie about Kurt Warner. You didn't see that? No. Zach, Zach, Zach I mean, yeah. Shazam. We make movies about nonsense, but a dude in a box, this is one of the best movies of all time if it, if it was done right. Dude living in a box for nine months while the captors deal with his wife and the FBI and Interpol and all that stuff. If that was a pretty white woman in that box, it, everyone would know their name. Oh, everyone cans. would know it all. Yeah, and she's got great hands <laughs> and she's easily chilled. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, everyone who lives in reality. And that police footage came up. We all went, this is very sad. That girl's nipples are very hard also. <laughs> we can't help it. You guys, do, it, and the reason why is because you go to such great lengths our entire lives to hide your nipples from us. So when they make an appearance, you know, it's Michael Jackson poked his head out in the 80s. People are going to lose their minds. When the Beatles showed up, they chased him down the road. Your nipples pop out. It lights a room up. We don't see those live that often. <laughs> it, it makes the room happier. It's a celebrity. It's a celebrity sighting. They're... They have no Facebook page. They, you know, nipples on a girl are, <gasps> they're out. We try to get pics. Ups, upskirt shots are another one. I don't understand that one, but it's a billion-dollar industry on the Internet to try to get pictures of people without underwear on. Because <laughs> it's like spotting a celebrity where you're not supposed to see them. Something that's hidden that reveals itself is exciting, no matter if it's a girl who's just been abducted or not. Insensitive? Sure. Whole conversation is. Real? Yep. And that's what we don't deal with anymore. Reality. But they got to shoot this dude. They, they found the boyfriend uh, walking on a trail, and they have cameras on the trail. Did you see the picture of him? It's like Bigfoot. He's walking. Th- did you- it's on TMZ. They think it's him. Uh, his name's Laundry, And he's walking through this wooded area. But they've got some surveillance cameras in the area on the trails. And uh, this this grainy night vision picture of a guy walking through there, kind of balding, but his hair's growing back a little bit because he hasn't been home for a few weeks. Uh, they're like, we're pretty sure this is him. So he's in the. So now they kind of have that Tommy Lee Jones three mile radius. 
But we'll see. That's a crazy story. But ladies, you can be abducted. Men, when you're abducted, just know this. No one's going to care. The news isn't going to care. Unless you've done something terrible before, that's the only time we look. And you're right. We even gave up on that dude in Scottsdale. Blew his house up. Oh, yeah. And I remember when it happened, the cops were like, he's black ops. Good chance we don't find this guy. Like, really? Yeah. Any questions? Are you going to look? For a little bit. Meh. It's a dude. We're it's a, busy. It's a missing dude. He's. What's the point? And we're going to go find a hot girl. We're going to do our damnedest to do that one. The world needs more of them. But I hope they find that guy. Then you hear the ones that are uh, 42 years later, we yeah. find him. <laughs> yeah, the person, yeah, the but they, who, that's someone who wanted to stay gone, though. If you've been missing for 42, you know you were missing. And usually they come back with a different name, too. And it's like, wait a minute. Like a baby is one thing. But when you're like, he's 61, he's been missing for 42 years. Dude wanted to go missing. No, I didn't. You don't? I, yeah, it's just, oh, I was uh, brainwashed. No, you weren't. You know you were missing. You might have been brainwashed, but deep down in your heart, you remember, uh, when I was in college, I was a different person, and then I disappeared for a while, and I ended up here. You know you're missing. I don't buy those stories either, the 42-year reunions of guys who didn't know where they were. Yes, you did. Guilt got a hold of you. The, the best story about that ever is a guy named John List. Who killed his? John killed his whole. He was the first guy they ever captured on America's Most Wanted, and they did it with a paper mache head. And he killed his whole family, and he moved, and he left him in the house, and he turned the air conditioner way down, and so they didn't stink, or there's no like animals that were trying to get in and stuff. So he got AC cooking, everybody laid out, and he disappeared. And and back then, obviously, tracking somebody was going to be a lot harder. And this is probably in the '70s, early '70s. And then and then he went to another city. And became a pastor and started a new life and all this other stuff. And, uh, and years later, they f- the America's Most Wanted pops them up that's there. That's not a bad paper no, mache No, the there paper the middle, mache face of him. The middle. And, the, and the, oh forens- the forensic scientist, like, here's what we think he looks like now. And he goes, because over time, the guilt would make his mouth droop down. And he'd probably wear big glasses now because uh, uh, guilty people tend to wear bigger things on their face if they hide their faces. And they made a paper mache of his head, and some lady goes, that's our pastor. I was like, you think? It does look a lot like him. And they looked into it, and sure enough, that was a dude. 25 years later. John List story is amazing. That's another one yeah. that should be a movie. The John List story is incredible. Uh, you don't have great cans, though, so. Nobody, nobody cared. Nobody's going to care, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Nobody cared. Now, show him with his shirt off. And he's got two hard nipples. <laughs> Next thing you know, we're combing the entire earth for it. Kicking high grass. Yeah, John List story is amazing. And especially when you stand, because that gave the CSI forensic science just the biggest boost in the world. Because America's Most Wanted, John Walsh was yelling, this head was made Start by paper the paper mache more. FBI. They paper mache what they think these people will look like. So that's when the whole mailer started to come to your house saying, have you seen this kid? And then he was abducted and 12 years ago. And here's what we think it looks like now. It's a process, and it's legit. There's a science to it. I love all those stories, but kidnap a hot girl. I'll make a movie about that in an hour. John Jody Arias would be the top earner on OnlyFans if they just gave her the tools. Oh, could you imagine Man. how disgusting, how gross uh, society would be? It would be revealed how gross we are if Jody Arias was allowed, a, right now, a fans-only page, OnlyFans page. I'd sign up. Of course you would. I mean, right away. Morbid, it's the same things we were talking about with Tyson. This is a meltdown. I'm going to watch a meltdown and maybe some great cans. We'd all look. Brady says he wouldn't sign up, but you would be very quick to be turn your chair to look at that and stare at her. You'd be looking over yeah, our shoulders. Yeah, if someone popped it up. Yeah, yeah, if somebody popped it up, you'd do it. Maybe you wouldn't Must pay look it. away. But we'd all, yeah, Must. I'm not. I won't dignify this, said no man. I'd watch because she's insane. It's terrifying. Anyway, maybe just dive deeper into your real psyche instead of acting like a Facebook warrior and pat yourself on the back every time you say the right thing. Just deep down in your head, you know what you're really thinking, perverts. Woman with hard nipples kills seven. Pictures on page Why five. Why did they design the bra? <laughs> yep, where's five? Page five, where's page five? <laughs> Woo! Those nipples are hard. She killed some people. The bra was only, you know, designed for support, sure, but it was also designed so 
productivity in workplaces could be done without Because of nipples? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sure that, uh, yeah, when that burning bra thing started in the 70s and women were starting to show up in offices with nipples hard, productivity dropped like 80%. <laughs> Dudes were like, well, <laughs> we're not allowed to touch them anymore, and they're walking around with it. Can we talk business? Sure can. It's like putting all the toys under the Christmas tree with no wrapping and saying, don't touch this. It's impossible. We're we're built a different way. Acknowledge female. Uh, It's 714. Let's get our wake-up song. What do you got over there? All right. Wake-up song brought to you guys by our buddies over there at Action Ride Shop. Josh and the boys are going to take care of you if you're going to be out there on the trails this this weekend when the weather is going to cool off, too, in the morning. So now it's time to get those morning rides in. But uh, need to rent one, need to buy one, you need the gear, they got it all. Plus, they got the Five Alarm Blend Coffee, so make sure you hit the boys up at actionrideshop.com, as well as on Instagram, Facebook, and all the other fun stuff. Uh, yeah, let's see, we got Anthrax, Aaron Jones, uh, or Aaron Jones, whatever the hell Primus, Every Time I Die, Limp Biscuit Counterfeit for Conor McGregor. All right, I love it, done. <laughs> <laughs> done, done, and done. The Biscuit wins. I like that. Robert Campy just texted. He goes, to you, I heard about two people charged with murder for butt implants on a wannabe porn star. What do you think I Googled? <laughs> hey, you don't Google the, what's this story about? Butt implants on a porn star. Let's take a look. Yeah. yeah Tyrus says, a young, successful African-American geologist missing without a trace. Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're hoping for. Something that'll spark this. I hope the, you know, it doesn't look good. I don't think when men go missing, usually they they want to. <laughs> oh, man. A couple of these are terrible. They just did a they just did an article a couple months back on that Robert Fisher guy that got to kill yeah. his family. Yeah, that's it's 20 years later. It's been 20 years now. Brushed under the rug. There. Yeah. And they still don't know where he is. And he's like 60 years old yep. now, they're saying. And they, they, were, they were like, we're pretty, the one, I saw something about the preview for that one. They're like, the one cop was like, we're pretty sure he died out in the woods. We just never found him. Yeah, right. You're you're saying that so we relax. Yeah. Because if dude can pull that off. Because I remember that when that happened, and the first thing they said, he's black ops. There's a good chance he disappears. He he can live in the woods. He knows what he's doing. He can he can thrive. They found his truck. Remember that? They yeah. knew exactly where he went, and then, then he disappeared. Like, here's his truck up here in the woods in the Tonto. And uh, that's pretty much the last we're going to see him. He's going to subterranean tunnel all the way to Mexico. We know that. That story's pretty fast. Some good ones. Arizona's got some good, you know, lifetime movies waiting to happen. Just can't get it done. But nothing like Limp Biscuits Counterfeit. Somebody should make a movie about them. <laughs> and their disappearance. Although they did come back a couple years ago and put on a hell of a show. They're still doing stuff, right? They did a show just recently. Yeah, they did. But now they've they've canceled the rest of the tour because of COVID. The vid. Yeah. yeah. Didn't, not, they didn't get it. They just don't want, they don't they want, don't want to be Gray involved in bringing everybody Yeah, Chad around. Gray got it. Yeah. It's weird. Actually, I'm at a point now where I think I know more people with it currently than at any point during the last year and a half, two years. For yeah. sure. I'm, I'm in Same a situation where I got six or seven people. I'm like, God, I got it, got it, got it. I can't go to uh, my kinesiology dude that does stretching and, and work for me because uh, his whole house has it except him. So he's like, I'm the only one that doesn't have it. He got tested and he's like, but the people in my house, all of them, all of them have it. One of them's getting their ass kicked by it. And I'm like, well, I can't be around you just in case because i got to go into a hospital on Friday where they're testing me every two minutes, waiting for ages to get this this leg fixed. What's he do, just lock himself in his room then? Or so, what? yeah, he's on the other side of the house. He's doing the best he can not to interact. And I'm like, well, I'm not hanging out with you until this is all over. <laughs> Which has got to be brutal because the air conditioning is still right. you know, pushing air through all the rooms. That's what and- I said. He's like, he, I, evidently, he's wearing a mask in the house, and he's like, oh, that sucks. He tried to get a hotel room for a little while, but he's like, it's just too big. He's got, they got a kid. Oh, it's crazy. Everything's crazy. See, kids ruin everything. Kids wreck it all. Yeah. Kids put you in peril. Next thing you know, you got underwear under your car, and you're talking to the police going, I don't know where. I just parked here. Oh, my name is not Father Dale. Yeah, that's all I could <laughs> think was like, if I come out and there's a cop standing next to you, you know anything about this? I'm like, ugh. Of course. Or you went up to him, hey, found these pants. Right, you uh, can't win that. I found a boy's underpants. and a, There's boys' underpants in your car. You know anything about it? The second somebody says, you know anything about these boys' pants, you're, you're, you can't explain your way out of that. No. What do you mean? They were under your car. I just parked here. Yeah, it's the likely story. <laughs> Turn around. Hiking, he got lost. <laughs> right, he's uh, out there somewhere. Hmm. Why'd you have your car detailed today? Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a pretty clean vehicle. Recently washed. Yeah, I had to Cairo do it this morning. Detailed the whole thing. Detailed, eh? And now we've got boys' panties nearby. 
to me like a cover up. Great. Yeah, to keep your keep your kids underpants in your possession. Unless it's covered in scorpions or something. And even then, what kind of parenting are you doing? You have to drop your kid's pants because it's covered in poisonous stings. <laughs> that was a rough one. I didn't see him when I pulled in, but when I got out, I looked down. Did you post him yet? Has anyone claimed those? No, I have not posted Post it up on our Facebook page. <laughs> John found boys' pants. Uh, I've ridden my bike on the trails and looked over. I took a picture of that one time. Full outfit of like a teen. Underwear. Shorts, jean jacket. i got to uh, save this to my phone. In bushes. <laughs> I'll just keep sending it to you until you do so. Damn it. I don't understand where people's clothes just fly off. Like one at a time. I could get it if the whole thing came off and you're sitting there like, okay, I'm changing my clothes and I'm getting rid of these. But just a just one pair, like shoes on the freeway. I never understood that either. Just How does that happen? There's a shoe well, in just the that, Just one. The, the mess along the uh, borders. Well, that makes that sense just, to me. I know. I guess. Well, that makes sense, though. I'm talking about things that don't make sense. A shoe in the middle of the freeway doesn't make sense to me. Like somebody just took it off and chucked it in the air? Yeah. How does a shoe end up in the freeway? Just one. There's got to be a foot in it. Anyway. Uh, you got the biscuit ready? Yeah. Well, Toledo posts those uh, that the <laughs> underpants <laughs> on his face. Do it on your personal one. No. <laughs> God, no. I'm making sure. Doubly sure. And just put, check it out, and then a heart emoji. Oh, man. Adorable. (laughs) Has anyone seen the rest of this? Yeah, find the other parts of this. Let's piece it together. I didn't like it. Made me uncomfortable. What? No way. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com.